Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Inside the Force, and I am David Cottingham here with Hannah Burr, who is on the road. <laughs> how are you doing, Hannah? I'm doing well, and how are you? Doing good. Yeah, you're for some long hours. <laughs> I love the smile on your face. Good job. <laughs> hey, it's fun, so I'll, I'll take it. So yes, hello from uh, North Carolina. Hey, I was about to say, where are you? North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know, I mean, we're so we're, normally we're in Kentucky, and North Carolina is what about seven, six, seven hours away? It's is a that five hour drive? Well, mm, oh wait, it was a five hour drive from, from Tennessee. Yeah, so it's about eight hours, right? Yes, yeah, about eight, something Not like that. Yeah, Knoxville's about three, I guess, right? Something like that. So something. anyway. She's in a, but we're in the same time zone still, which is good. So not too late for you right now, right? Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Um, all right. Well, thanks, Hannah, for uh, uh, sticking with me this week, even though you're out of town. I've uh, got some great things to talk about. Uh, mainly these last two episodes of the Bad Batch that just dropped. I'm glad you were able to get those in uh, and watch those because they were really, really good. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. Uh, first off, of course, thanks to our patrons, as always. Thanks for keeping the support going. Um, like we mentioned last week, uh, new websites out there. Find all the links that you want there, especially to our store. Patreon's on there if you want to check out our um, tiers and, and support the show that way. But... Um, we do appreciate all the support as always. Uh, this also, this episode of Inside the Force, as we mentioned last week that we've got to kind of stick with, is this week has been celebrating Star Wars Podcast Day, which was February 7th, which I think was Tuesday? Yes. Oh, wait, is today the 7th? No, it was yesterday. Tuesday. Yes. yes. Tuesday. Yes. Um, so a lot of podcasters, you know, Star Wars podcasters put their episodes out, um, yesterday, but they're also doing it throughout the week. Like we are, our episode doesn't really come out until Friday. It's Friday right now when you're listening to this. Um, but you know, we just want to acknowledge podcast day, uh, for everybody that's out there. I think I saw last, I saw, I think of 122 podcasts participated. Oh, wow. This week, which is a lot. Yeah, which is not even all of them, <laughs> which is crazy. So we do really, again, appreciate people that uh, are come to us and listen to Inside the Force and find us, especially those of you that have been with us for a long time. I mean, Hannah, I got, I got to keep reminding, too, that next month we are actually celebrating our 10-year anniversary what? of doing the show. Yes. We started this thing back in 2013. So 10 years I've been doing this and, uh, and I love every minute of it. So, you know, that's what this, that's what this podcast day I think is kind of celebrating. We're celebrating the very first Star Wars podcast, Jedi Talk, that launched back in 1999 on February 7th. And this is kind of just a recognition of that and to let people listeners know that maybe new listeners obviously that have that are trying to find another podcast or or more po star wars podcasts um so briefly what what we're about uh hannah and i we what this show each week we're just inside the force i mean that's all it is is inside everything star wars um we'll we'll look at the news we'll kind of break down what's happening there give our our opinions about things um talk about the publishing dates that are out there because it's all about star wars what what we're looking forward to coming out things that we cover as far as novels and comics and games and things like that mm -hmm. and then um and then we try to focus at least i try to come up with a main topic to talk about something unique every episode uh but sometimes it's like this one sometimes it's not necessarily a main topic but it's kind of reviewing an episode of star wars or a movie of star wars that comes out Okay. Um, that we want to focus our attention on at this at that point. So um, that's it. It's just positive, light discussion, uh, in-depth discussion, 
about Star Wars. I mean, Hannah and I are obviously massive fans of Star Wars. Um, I'm very grateful that Hannah has jumped on board with me on this since I, I kind of lost my co-host Casey to twins when he had twins a year ago and he's still, you know, being a father and doing all that. I totally get it. Um, but you know, Hannah has been a fantastic, uh, co-host with me. And then of course, beyond that, you know, we have our YouTube channel. If you are listening to it, just listen to us on the podcast and want some more content from us. Uh, YouTube is a place where we have, uh, put together some other shows, mainly specific uh, topic specific. Um, Hannah and I do a show called beyond the saga where we are talking about just that all the stories beyond the films, uh, comics, books, TV, you know, uh, not, not necessarily TV, but, um, games and, and things like that. We've mm-hmm. even done, uh, to, per your suggestion, we've even done the rides at Disney. Absolutely. Right? Oh yeah. Uh, Rise of the resistance and smugglers. Have we, did we, have we, yeah, we did smugglers run too, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, then of course we've got council sessions where we talk about specific questions that are out there. We've got uh, masters of the order where we interview people that have worked on star Wars and we've got dark knowledge that Corey and I talked about the dark side of the force of things. Um, and then we've got, you know, some commentaries and things like that that we'll, we'll put up on there. And then of course we have extra content that's not on there, not on the show that's on Patreon. So, uh, we're kind of spreading out to all the kind of different things and different mediums and, you know, however you, however in depth you want to enjoy inside the force, there's all kinds. If you just listen to us on the podcast every week, that that's good too, you know? Mm -hmm. So either way, we appreciate all that. That's that's kind of our uh, backstory and our involvement in, in the Star Wars community, and uh, and we're grateful and obviously appreciative of being a part of Podcast Day, Star Wars Podcast Day. Every you know, I think I think this has been three years now in a row that they've done it, um, and uh, we we definitely want to keep participating and and showing the love of Star Wars. You know, absolutely. Um, Truly appreciate you, Dave, for asking me to join first with Beyond the Saga and then joining <laughs> Inside the Force in general. Truly, truly do appreciate it. And it's just been a blast. Yes. I, I you know, I've, I think, you know, it's it's funny because I've always, uh, not always, but I mean, I, I remember for a while there, after, you know, so many years that me and Casey had done it, I remember even telling him, I'm like, we we desperately need to find a female voice in this, you know, female perspective, you know, cause I think, you know, two dudes talking about Star Wars. I mean, it's, it wasn't any different than a lot of the shows that are out there. Right. So, and of course there's, you know, you, you always had, I mean, you always had female, I, I believe in a way you always had female heroes in Star Wars, uh, specifically starting with Princess Leia and then Ahsoka yeah. eventually. But you know, as, as these we started this podcast on right when we found out that Disney had purchased Star Wars, and we knew we were going to get more stories. And you know, going on through that, you see the the heroes that they were bringing forth. Uh, starting off with Ray, obviously right off the bat, and then you've got Jen Erso, and then you've got um, uh, you know Hera and Sabine and Rebels and you just you're getting and, and so you know it was always kind of in the back of my head you know I'd love to get a, a female perspective and you know obviously female insights um, even though we're fans we're, we're more, more than likely we always usually have the same kind of opinions but you know it's always good to hear your perspective on things and you know I think we both kind of um, you know come up with ideas and things that we wouldn't have normally have thought of so Absolutely. it's been, yeah, it's been fantastic. So, um, so I, I, I pray you don't get sick of me and sick of the show anytime soon. So, uh, <laughs> never, uh, never. and it's, it's fun too. Cause Hannah and I, 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 we actually work with each other also, you know, as on our daily lives, we don't really spend that much time with each other cause we're all, we're doing separate things, but, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we are occasionally in the same building. So (laughs) this week we're not because you're on the road. (laughs) So anyway, that was kind of a long winded participation uh, for Star Wars podcast day. So um, please uh, go check out as many as you can. And of course, if you're checking us out this week, we appreciate you giving us a try and hope you come back. Um, Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, And thank you. Okay, so let's get on with the show, move on to some quick news here. Um, I, was, I was glad Hannah heard this news because I thought it was fantastic. I saw a tweet from E.K. Johnston the other day, the writer of novels that you should be very familiar with, especially if you listen to us on Beyond the Saga. Uh, she wrote the Ahsoka novel, mm-hmm. and she wrote the, I, I guess it's, I don't think I officially heard this, but the Padme trilogy with okay. um, Queen Shadow, Queen's uh, Peril, and then Queen's Hope. Um, and so now she has just announced her next Star Wars novel, and that would be, Hannah, what is it called? Crimson, shoot. <laughs> Climb. <laughs> Climb, thank you. I was about to say Crimson Rain, and I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> That, yes, that's close. I keep thinking Crim- Crimson Rain because of the comic. Yes. But Crimson Climb is the next uh, Star Wars book from E.K. Johnston. Um, and it is going to be, I mean, basically what's on the cover is Kira. Mm-hmm. So it is the rise of Kira. Now, I don't know if you did you at all read the synopsis or the timeline that no. this takes place in? No, I didn't read any of that. Okay. I just happened to see the book cover or or at least see the announcement of it. Yes. So, um, and this kind of got it, it looks like it kind of got leaked, but I don't think because uh, I haven't seen an official. Um, official synopsis but this is what one's rolling around online right now it's called it says here it says kira listened to the dreams and promises of a boy with a reckless smile only to be torn away from him and returned to the white worms gang while han made his own made his way to freedom now freedom seems like a luxury she can't afford while she concentrates on survival and despairs of ever leaving corelio but her fortunes seem to turn when a representative of the crime syndicate Crimson Dawn plucks Kira from captivity and brings her to the syndicate's leader, the mysterious and merciful Dryden Voss. Voss offers Kira an opportunity she'd never had before, the chance to build something resembling a comfortable life if she can prove her worth to the organization. With failure meaning certain death, Kira knows she must immerse herself in the merciless, murderous world of Crimson Dawn, where what she doesn't know is just who she will be if she survives. So when I first heard this announcement, I thought this book was about post-Solo. Yeah. But now it's come to, it seems that it's actually pre-Solo. Huh. Or at least during. Yeah. yeah during I, the time jump. Yes, it could be. I, I, I think this is going to fill in the gap of when Han last sees her to when Han runs into her. That's my feeling is when – because you remember there was about – what was it? Three – I think it was three years? I think it was three years. Something like that. That sounds very similar to like we filled in the gaps with what happened to Jin in uh, Rogue Rogue Rising. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. Hmm. And I do think, I I think this is completely setting up to be exactly like the Padme trilogy. I think there's going to be multiple. I think she's probably going to make multiple books. Really? I do. I do. I think this will be this timeline. And then I think because, you know, there was this, I think there was this hope that they would eventually make maybe a a Disney Plus series with 
you know, uh, with with um, with Alden Amelia as Clark. Han, and then maybe even Amelia Clark, and you know, bring back you know what what what's going to happen with Maul and all this stuff. So I doubt that that's I kind of doubt that's going to happen anymore. So you should probably make it a book on what happens when she goes and visits Maul, and then eventually what happens to Maul because we need that story eventually. How does Maul end up at the end of Solo to when we see him in Rebels? We still don't know that timeline either. Hmm. So I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a trilogy of Kira books. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was hoping. I, I, I. Part of me felt like, especially after Queen's Hope, you know, at the end, you know, like I thought we were. Get, I thought we were gonna get. I thought we were gonna get somebody else. Did you think? Didn't you? Didn't we talk about that? I think we did. Yeah, I just I don't. Kira's never really been someone that I'm like. I really want to know what. I really want to know about her. I know what. I want to know what happened to her. Mm-hmm. But that was that was my thought process behind Jin, and then I read Rebel Rising, and I was like, I'm so glad I know all this about Jin. So true. But the trilogy would be interesting because we would get that the second if we're st- if we're following the same formula as the Padme trilogy, and we jump back in time to probably how she met Han in the second book, that, and then in the third that, book, that was actually already a book. Okay, that was already well, a book. Uh, how far back do they go? I can't remember. There's a book that came out called Most Wanted. Oh, and it, it was kind of a prequel to Solo, but it was a prequel to the beginning of Solo when you know when they were younger and before he left. Uh, I don't believe it was a. I think it was. I think it was. I don't think it was complete history, but it was uh, before the book, before the movie came out, before the timeline of the movie. So then, I can't remember it. It wasn't. It wasn't that great. So I vaguely remember it, but. I did listen to it. It was a young adult novel. But doesn't need... Is there a trilogy needed? Like, if you were to make this a trilogy, what trilogy... Like, what are the three books? Or three well, seconds? Well, yeah. Seconds. Yeah, I think I think this one, obviously, to fill in the gap. But then the next one, to me, would have to be what happens after Solo. Okay. Um, which is how does she actually... Well, it's kind of like what happens to Maul and then what happens to Crimson Dawn in general because by the time we get to the movie trilogy, like the original trilogy, four, five, and six, I mean, obviously it didn't exist then, but there's no mention of Crimson Dawn until we get to the comics, right? So in the comics, we and we covered War of the Bounty Hunters, it was kind of the reemergence of Crimson Dawn, right? And they even talk about how Oh wow! So Crimson Dawn is back. Yeah. So there's a gap there that Crimson Dawn didn't exist, or was thought to be, I guess, you know, extinct in a sense. So what so, if the first book fills in the gap for Kira? The second book shows us how Maul got to where he is by the end of Solo, and then the third book is what happens after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Kira and Maul. Now is that interesting? I yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, Kira, I'm with you. I think I think there's I, I don't think there's much there with Kira yet. There's not enough substance. I mean, I I think the comics are really good. Um, but you know, War of the Bounty Hunter was more centered on Boba Fett and the bounty hunters and they're fighting over you know, Carbonite Frozen Han. Now Crimson Rain, which I don't know if you have read yet, um, I don't Crimson. Think I, have. I don't think you have. Um, no. Which we'll, we need to cover, but Crimson Rain is it, that was really good because that's that's kind of her trying to uh, manipulate the Empire and all the other syndicates, and then of course Hidden Empire, which is the third group of that trilogy with her is out right now. I think the second book or third book is coming out about to come out. So I haven't read that yet, but 
But you know, I mean, again, she's she's head of Crimson Dawn in the comics at this point, so it's like, you know, she's doing what she does. And, and again, it's, it, is it that interesting? I mean, it's it's cool, but there's not really much substance with her there. Um, obviously, there's no Han, so you know, Han was kind of the the reason why she existed, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm with you. I don't know. It's um. Mm-hmm. I'd be more I do like E.K. Johnson, though. Oh, yeah, I do like E.K. Johnson, too. But I'd be more interested in Maul. Yes, I'm, de- I'm definitely interested. I- I'm, I'm, I'm dying to know what happened to him, mm-hmm. um, how he got to be on, on um, uh, what, what, was it Morban? I guess it was Morban. I think it was Morban in Rebels. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm very interested in how that happened, how that went down. So anyway, that's um uh I don't see uh let's see, is there a release date? I don't see the I don't see a release date yet. Yeah. Um not sure when it's coming out yet. I'm assuming she has been writing young adult novels, so I'm assuming this is a young adult novel. Not an adult novel. Hmm. Yeah, actually it says young adult. Revealing it would be a young adult novel focused on Kira's rise through Crimson Dawn. Okay. So young adult novel, no release date yet, but uh, we'll let you know as soon as we do. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, another quick announcement for Star Wars Celebration that's happening in April. This, of course, is the 40th. We're approaching the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Crazy. So they are doing a, as they do with most celebrations when there's an anniversary, they are doing a a big uh, panel for the movie. And there was an announcement that they are returning a lot of the actors from Return of the Jedi. Really, and not just the main act, not just the main actors. We're not talking about we're not talking about Mark Hamill or Harrison Ford or uh, or Anthony Daniels, which I'm sure Anthony Daniels will definitely be there. He never misses a celebration. But we're talking about Michael Carter, who played Bib Fortuna. We're talking about Sean Crawford, who played Yak Face. We're talking about Tim Dry, who played Jaquil. I don't, these are characters that are in like Jabba's barge. Then you got Femi Taylor who played Ula, you know, the, the dancing Twi'lek that was chained up. Ed, uh, Mike Edmonds who played uh, Low Gray, the, uh, the priest of the Ewoks. Mike Quinn who played Nia Num. Tim Rose who played Admiral Akbar. And then Caroline Blankenston who played Mon Mothma from Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So, right now there's that there's that guest list for um for uh their 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And then of course another announcement that came through was uh Ahsoka Tano live action Ahsoka Tano Rosaria Dawson will be at Star Wars Celebration as well. That's awesome. So, yeah. Exciting. Yes. Love those um those celebrations i was at celebrations for the th- i was at the 40th one for a new hope um which would have been 2017 right yeah 2017 and then i was at the um was i at the i was at the 30th for did they have a, i can't remember they have a, I think they had 30th. I think Return of the Jedi was a 30th anniversary at one of the celebrations anyway. So anyway, celebration coming April 7th through the 10th over there in Europe. Uh, I know, Hannah, you told me before we started recording you didn't see this, but uh, I did. And what's out there now is nine minutes of gameplay for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. You need to go check this out when we get off here. 
I was about to say, as soon as we're done recording, I'm going to take a look. <laughs> Nine minutes of gameplay. Uh, I think IGN, it was IGN um, exclusive. So they put it out there. Um, I mean, in short, very similar to the first game. A lot of crazy lightsaber moves now, though. Uh, I don't know. And it's It looks gorgeous. I mean, the scenery is stunning. Um, and I'm assuming this is from the very beginning of the game. Apparently, I think Cal Kestis crash lands on this planet, and then you're trying to make a way off. But anyway. Um, but, of course, the unfortunate news, I think we mentioned it last week, mm-hmm. the game got pushed back. So it will not be op- out until April 28th. Um, I can't wait. I actually just bought I just bought a new Xbox. What? So I can actually play it. I yeah, because my old, my old Xbox wouldn't pl- wouldn't be able to play it. So I had to buy a new one. So I bought a new Xbox. <laughs> What'd you say? You're you're gonna do? But you got PS what? Five four four. I think it's it's coming out on that though, right? Or is it coming out just on? PS5. I can't remember. I think it's just PS5, but if it's PS4, I have to wait anyway. It, it, I think it's, but it's PC, which you guys do PCs, right? Yeah, we also do have PC. So if anything, we'll yeah. get it for that. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Okay, and I think you saw this. Actually, I don't think we talked about this, but they released the release dates for Star Wars Visions. Oh, did they? Yes. Oh, you didn't see that? I did not. So so we're getting, so Star Wars Visions is um, going to be um, back out with, I believe, nine new short films from nine different studios, and not just anime studios, just animation studios from around the world. Oh, wow. And all nine will be released on Star Wars Day, May the 4th. (laughs) That's brilliant. Good way to celebrate Star Wars Day. Right? So the – now, you may have heard of some of these. I haven't heard of them, but here are the names of the the studios. You've got El Guri, which is out of Spain – You've got Cartoon Saloon, which is out of Ireland. You've got Punk Robot, which is out of Chile. You've got Ardman, which is out of the UK. Studio Mir, which is out of South Korea. Studio Le Chache, Chachette, uh, France. 88 Pictures out of India. Diart Shatiro out of Japan. And then you've got Triggerfish out of South Africa. I've not heard of any of those. I oh, know. Me neither. So nine studios, nine films. Mm-hmm. Um, and here are the titles for the nine films. Okay. One is called, okay, you got one called Sith. You've got... Uh, Screechers Reach you've got In the Stars I Am Your Mother Journey to the Dark Head The Spy Dancer The Bandits of Golak The Pit and Ayu's Song hmm. no descriptions are of what they are yet I'm I'm pretty sure any day now they're probably going to drop a trailer. Um, maybe not a day now, but because we're still a couple months away. Sometime in February, I think they'll probably put a trailer out that kind of shows us what these look like. But you know, it's not it's not um, as far as what I think I'm reading. They're not all again. They're not all. You know how the first volume was pretty much all Japanese anime. Um, this is not the case. This is kind of unique to each locations animation style so you're getting different animation styles from all around the world 
I think that's really, how really you, How cool. do you feel about this? Oh, I'm very excited for this. I think it's a great concept and I think it's a great way for uh, us to see how different cultures in- interpret Star Wars and see their own spins on it. I I can't wait. I think this this is a, a fantastic idea. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. I just, you know, my big thing, my big concern when the first volume came out was, and always is, is, is it canon? Oh. You know, now the first volume, here's the thing is, I, I, I never heard them say that it wasn't, but I also never heard them say that it was. You know, because some of these stories were obviously a little like out there, right? You had a couple of those, especially the, some of those that featured, you know, Jedi and Sith and things like that. Like I think one was called The Elder, right? Where that old man was fighting like the master and the press, which I thought was really good. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. Is it canon? I don't know. And, and, and they're not obviously telling us that they're not telling us when it, when it takes place. I think the only one that you kind of questioned was there was one that had the one that had the Tatooine band and Boba Fett was actually in it. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of pinpoint that, that when that happens, but all the other ones, there's no reference to timeline really. I don't think at least I'd have to watch them again, but you know, there was one that seemed like it was kind of the empire with the, with the brother and the sister were yes. uh seemed like that was the but you know the thing about it is is could that have happened sure i mean i guess it could have but i, I just part of me wishes that they the stories were a little more connected as far as like in the to, in the, in the timeline but or at least tell me when it, when it happened you know sure. um but if it's not canon then that's fine just tell me it's not canon and then i won't worry about it but i haven't heard that it's not canon just like these, I haven't really heard that these aren't canon either. So we'll just have to see what, what comes of this. I mean, like one's called Sith. So it's going to be about the Sith. So I hope it's canon. I hope so too. I mean, I'd like to think that one about the twins is a what if scenario. True. What if Luke and Leia, you know, were born and then stayed with their father? And we're on the dark side. Yeah, but they weren't they, what they weren't called Luke and Leia, though. No, right? they weren't. They they weren't. That's why I was like, maybe it's another. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think I've ever interpreted visions as canon. I think it was meant to be. This could be the universe, if that makes sense. Yes, and you know what? You know what? I the way I would look at it. In the, in, in the way I would, if I was for Lucasfilm and I would tell you to look at it is like these are stories within the Star Wars universe. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yes. people have, people have heard about Jedi. People have heard about Sith. People have heard about these things. Well, this is their story that they're telling. So like. This is a story that young Leia would read about in a book or something like that. This is like, like tell me it's that. And I, I, totally. Star Wars fairy tale. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. I think we're experiencing like that. would be cool. <laughs> I don't mean to over talk. Oh, over you got you a little know. delay. No, you're fine. You're fine. But that would be, I think that would make, make sense. And I think that would be, uh, pretty cool concept to do, you know, as far as that goes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so anyway, Star Wars Visions coming to you on May the 4th. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe uh, the Mandalorian is going to be wrapped up by then. So you won't have like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, if we're getting eight episodes of Mandalorian again, that'll wrap on the April 19th. So yeah, so May the 4th, which is actually a Thursday this year, um, 
looks like Star Wars Visions might be the only thing we get on May the 4th because I doubt that Ahsoka is ready to go. Um, and then Skeleton Crew is later in the year. So anyway, at least there's something, right? Yes. But there will also great. be a lot of, uh, yeah, and there will also be a lot of reveals at Celebration. So we already have a bunch of news and things like that from that. So anyway. All right. Um, that's it with the news there. Uh, of course, just remember, uh, as far as upcoming releases, you know, we just said uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivors pushed back, but Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars, the novel that takes place between the games, coming out March 7th. High Republic novels, Cataclysm, April 4th, and Path of Vengeance, May 2nd, and Inquisitor Rise of Red Blade still coming on July 18th. Again, no release date yet for uh, Crimson Climb, which I'm assuming will still be this year sometime. Mm-hmm. Comics. Uh, last week, we mentioned that Sana Staros got her own comic started. That was last week. Uh, this week, you got Vader 31, High Republic number five, and Hidden Empire. We just talked about that. Number three. See, next week, Star Wars 31, Bounty Hunters 31, and then the end of February, you got Dr. Aphra 29, and Yoda number four. All right, Hannah. Let's talk Bad Batch. Yes, let's. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let me pull this up because i had it on so okay so this is episodes seven and eight we got a two we got two episodes not necessarily two-parter but they are linked together so the first one uh which is called clone conspiracy so both of us uh i think have felt the same way in that Last few episodes have been, you know, kind of teetering a little bit. I haven't, I wasn't all that happy about episodes four and five, which were faster and entombed. And then last, last week's try better, but you know, it was good. Not, it was okay. Clone conspiracy. I'll let you go first. What'd you think? This is the bad batch we've been waiting for. <laughs> this, <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, this, this is what we've been expecting. We're getting story. We're figuring out what's happening, how it's affecting the bad batch. I don't really feel like you can talk about each episode by itself without talking about the other because they True. are so connected. Um, but I, I do like the fact that we are getting some politics in there. We're seeing how the Senate works. We're seeing Senator Organa and his behind the scenes of trying to overthrow Palpatine, but figuring out how to do that with the, seat in the Senate. We see other senators. And I, I love the fact that we're touching on the whole idea that the clones are people too. So what happens if we take them out? Like who's going to care about them? They are people even though they were programmed to do this one thing, even though they were bred to do one thing, if we replace them, where does that leave them? And then we get the whole idea of what happened with Camino and that's being leaked. I mean, there, there's just so, so much. And then also I love the fact that we see Omega meditating in that episode in that first episode <laughs> so maybe maybe we will get some force stuff i mean it sounds like gunji kind of was trying to train her a little bit i don't know <laughs> maybe you really you really want her to be force sensitive i don't you? do <laughs> i so do like give her some reason why she's really really special <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. Like, at one point, I'm like, is it because she's Ray? But then that makes no sense at all. So never mind. But, you know, it makes no sense yeah. if she's Ray. But I was like, there has to, like, in the first season, it's it's focused that she's special. The question is why. Is she an attempted clone from Sidious? To try to get the Force? 
I, I don't know. Like, so to yes, yes, yes. I'm hyper focused on the fact that I hope that she is force sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what yeah, are your I tools? get that. <laughs> um, this, yeah, I agree with you. This was, uh, this was getting the show back on track for sure. Um, you know, and it is, again, and it is something which is funny. It's just something that makes complete sense as far as the clones being human beings also, not just soldiers, but you don't really think about that. And I failed to think about that, you know, like I, even, even when the bad batch started last year and you know, this whole thing about the question came up, well, well, do, should we start just getting volunteers? You know, what do we do with the, you know, the, and, and it was always a cost thing, right? Like it costs too much money to keep cloning, you know, Django Fett and making all these clones. We can just find recruits that are loyal to the Empire and make them soldiers. So you, I don't know, if, at least I did. I just kind of had this idea. Okay, okay, well, they'll just kind of shove the clones off and then we got stormtroopers. But like what happens to the clones? And you know what's really great that again how they tie this stuff together is do you remember in obi-wan kenobi we saw that old clone sitting there begging yes i mean that's ultimately what happens to them right we kind of see a glimpse of them not some of them at least some of them not being taken care of and this is kind of that setup for that and what a great concept not only are you trying to show us you know how this how the empire transitions from clones to stormtroopers but you're also trying to show us that that these clones need to be represented and taken care of and i thought that was a fantastic way to go i mean i i just thought that was gr it's great storytelling um so yeah, I loved it. I, and you know, I'm I'm a sucker for this very kind of felt a lot like Andor a little bit where it's got the political side to it and you're kind of behind the scenes in the Senate and you know, and and it, and, it all, and I think I've said it on here several times is that I'm still I'm, I'm still blown away that even though the empire is established and even though there's an emperor that there's still a Senate mm -hmm. and a functioning Senate so I'm still I'm still kind of intrigued by how all that still works, even though there's a and we kind of got a glimpse of that a little bit that Palpatine doesn't even show up to these anymore, really. No, I think it's he shows up when it's when it's important and he doesn't show up when it's not. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think, you know, I think there was there's a couple of references in some of the books out there, like in Thrawn and. And in um, Tarkin, that you know he's he kind of he kind of did his thing. He 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 made them elect him emperor, and he's kind of just sitting back and letting them kind of letting everybody kind of do their thing. And he's just kind of sitting back and only popping in when he needs to, kind of thing, you know. And which is pretty brilliant because you don't you don't make anybody mad necessarily. You don't seem like you're. Uh, you know, doing anything evil. So you don't seem like a micromanager, just, but you're micromanaging behind the scenes. <laughs> you are pulling so many strings and nobody knows. It's incredible. I, I, this kind of seeps into the second episode, but I like, I audibly yeah. gasped when he appeared audibly. I did too. And then listening to him, I was like, that son of a biscuit. He, <laughs> oh, he was one step ahead. Oh, he's so good. Like, he's so bad, but he's so good. Oh, like, yes. you're just so crushed because you feel like, yes, it's a win. And then it's a loss. And you're like, ah. I know. I, as soon as he started you know, for one, the music kicks in perfectly right then, right? And you're just like, oh, wait a minute. Here he comes. 
here he comes. And he shows up, and as soon as he starts talking about the situation, I'm like you. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he did it again. He did it again. He got people to believe something completely opposite to buy into his whole agenda, which he didn't even put forth. I mean, it's just brilliant. I can't believe how brilliant this guy is. Is it ever solidified in canon that he, because you know, it, it, with the force, you can kind of predict what's about to happen. Has he just yeah. honed the skill oh, yeah. of like future, future For, predicting? About foresight? Yeah. I, I definitely think that that's a part of it. I, I do think you're right. I think it's a part of it. Okay. Cause um, I was about to say like, he like, I mean, I love the fact that in, um, oh shoot, which book is it? I I think it's Queen's Hope, where we see his thought process as soon as he realized that they discovered someone who could help free slaves. I think, yeah, they found like a little, and they had mm -hmm. a, um, a uh, oh shoot, what's the alien race? Uh, the alien race. Of... Uh, they were a huge uh, part of the federal, uh, federal trade, um, trade the trade federation. Yeah, the trade federation. The Pneumonians. Uh, yes, the Pneumonians. Pneumonians. There was a Pneumonian who's like, they're wrong. This is what we need to do, and we see Palpatine's thought process. Where at first he's like, this is bad, but then he's like, you know what? No, it's good. Mm hmm. This is how I'm going to spin it, and then we'll be all good to go. So we saw we see a bit of that train of thought there, but it's insane how quick he is able to turn that around in this episode. Hundred percent, yeah. Oh. <sighs> I don't yeah, know. he he's it, it's pretty, and that's interesting. You brought up the the foresight thing because I, I I had not actually thought about that and. That has to be the his ability to be able to do a lot of these things. Now, if you remember uh, talking about the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, well, that's that's pretty much all he said in 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 Return of the Jedi every time was that I I have foreseen it, right? I mean, Vader's. Like, oh wow, you're right. Oh totally, yeah. He he saw that whole thing coming coming undone or the way it was going to lay out, which was he he technically he didn't tell Vader this, but he saw. Luke kill Vader and become his new apprentice. Mm -hmm. um, and he saw the rebellion ending. But what he didn't see, which is kind of the ironic thing and funny thing about the whole thing, is he didn't see the Ewoks getting involved ever, right? So that's what that's what changed it. Um, but he had foresight then that this was how everything was going to play out. So you're right. I think he's been doing this the entire time. I think, you know, obviously he, I think he foresaw how the clones would help him become emperor. Um, but even now he's still, he's still doing it. Uh, he's still manipulating the senators and getting them to vote what he wants to vote, even though it's, it's, it doesn't look like it's coming from him. I mean, it's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, someone like Senator, someone like Bail Ogan is sitting there. It's got to be like, what? What? How, we can't beat this guy. How do we beat this guy? I think you even see him go as soon as he appears. You see him like darken. He's not smiling. He's like, oh no, because chances yes. are he's probably seen this time and time and time and time again. Right. Right. Man, Absolutely. I think. Uh, talk about perseverance. Yeah, right. Um, so then, uh, so that's the kind of the Palpatine clone side of things. And of course, I think we need to talk about um, a little bit about our thoughts on how it shaped out with Echo. Yes. Like, how, do, how do you feel about that? That leads me to believe, I wonder if Crosshair is coming back. Ooh, you mean back to the good side? 
because now there's an open slot. Right. Interesting. Interesting. That's the only so thing I can it, think of. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's weird because I kind of had – I kind of had a feeling this was going to happen, but I actually didn't think it was going to happen this episode. I thought eventually it was going to happen. You thought Echo was going to just, just be with Rex. Yeah. Leave and go with Rex. Yeah. Because you know, when they had that conversation and Rex was like, you know, so many clones out there that need our help and there's not enough help. Like, I, I don't know where to get help from. I, you can kind of, even though Echo at the time had his helmet on, you kind of, could see and you kind of kind of see through his, his his mask there and see that he was like, wait a minute, so hmm. I need to I need to help. Like I, you know, I'm this. These are my brothers too, and I need to figure. It. So I thought it was going to happen eventually. I just didn't think it was going to happen this episode. So, um, but I tell you what, I that was the mu- again. The music has been incredible these last couple episodes. And there was a music change right there with with Omega, and and I was like, wow, I'm not like getting emotional here. <laughs> this is oh, I got this emotional. Is pretty incredible. Yeah. So do you, what do you, what do you think? Uh, I mean, how how do you think this? Aff- I mean, not set aside the Crosshair possibly coming back. I mean, what does this mean for the Bad Batch? Like losing a person like Echo. I mean, to be completely honest, I felt like Echo was a slightly redundant part with Tech. Right. I think Echo made Tech's life easier. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's... I don't think technically it'll change the dynamic too much. Except tech just will need more time to do certain things. I, but personality wise, now you're missing that voice in Hunter's ear constantly saying, we got to do something. We got to do something. We got to do something. So I don't know what that's going to do for the group now. What about, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Cause I think, I think you're right there. Cause I think, you know, tech purely tech and wrecker are order takers. Like mm-hmm. they'll do whatever Hunter says. Echo was always that one that kind of questioned something or, you know, pushed him to do something else. You know, like I don't really want to do that mission. Well, Hunter, we should, we need to, because we, because of this, you know, and he was kind of that, almost that angel on the soldier sh- uh, shoulder that was kind of, telling him kind of his conscience, like, you know, you, sh- yes, you can do this or no, you can't do that. Um, so, I, so that's going to be gone now. And I think Hunter is going to, you know, not that he's going to be more cautious, um, and reluctant about things, but I think he's, um, I think he's going to have a hard time maybe making the right decisions now hmm. by himself, unless yeah. Omega steps up and starts being that person. Omega has um, grown up quite a bit, so maybe, maybe Omega's going to be the new. Yeah. Huh. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And and she and she's had flashes of that a little bit, you know. She's she's kind of pushed them to do things that they weren't ready to do, and so I, I agree with that too. I think she's going to be, she's going to kind of step in that role, that voice of of Echo. Um. So I don't know. It's kind of, but see, but see, that's also another thing. Like with with him going with Rex, like I I want to I want to know that story too. I want to see that, but I don't think we're going to. Rex and Echo coming to Disney Plus in but, three years. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, or give me or give me a you know give me a a comic series about it or something. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was that was really good. I mean, these these past episodes, again, it wasn't really that action packed. You know, you had a couple of action sequences here and there, but it really was about the manipulation of Palpatine and you know these senators that are thinking they're doing the right thing and they <laughs> end up just 
handing over what whatever he wants and it's just crazy to to see that it really is a lose-lose scenario isn't it until until luke gets there yes it, it is a lose-lose scenario yep um just a couple of uh easter eggs in there um that uh, that I don't know if you noticed, but uh, so there was the other senator that was dressed in green that was kind of backing Bail Organa. Yes. Um, so she is Senator Tira Pamlo, who is actually in Rogue One. She's the one around the table with Jin, and she's the one that says, you're telling us to, you know, attack uh, Scarif with nothing but hope. Oh. Right? She's the one that says that. And, and Jin's the one that says rebellions are built on hope. So hmm. that's she's in Rogue One. She's also now in the Bad Batch. So I recognize her because she's wearing the same thing pretty much in Rogue One, the green uh, kind of hood and outfit. So she's in there. Um, of course, er- everyone should know that uh, in the Clone Wars, and I believe in Rebels, that Palpatine was voiced by Sam Witwer, who uh, also did Maul. Mm-hmm. But in this episode, it was actually Ian McDermott came back and I love voiced that. Palpatine, which I thought, I know, right? I was like, oh my gosh, that is awesome. I think that's what gave me chills. I was Absolutely. There's nothing like Ian McDermott uh-uh. and voice in Palpatine. There's nothing like it. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> I know. I love Sam Weber too, but you know, man, he is. You know that voice, man, as soon as he oh. talks. It's crazy. Um, And of course, just for me, I, no matter what it is, I love seeing Coruscant. Mm hmm. As, as soon gorgeous. as the first scene opened up on Coruscant, I was like, oh, Dave's going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I was like, yes. Love seeing Coruscant. And I love seeing it at this point in time because I, because we haven't seen it, you know, what's going on there. I mean, obviously, we're really close to episode three here, so it's kind of the same. But love seeing an Andor, you know, love seeing an animation. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, what else? Anything? Any other thoughts on these episodes? I think we hit all the major ones. It'll just be interesting to see where mm-hmm. it goes from here. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, unfortunately, I think we're, I think we're done with Rampart. Actually, I think he's, I think he's out of it. Oh, definitely. There's no way. I mean. There's no way he's coming back from that. He was a pawn from the beginning. If he was successful, yeah. great. If not, they had their plan B there. Um, I it like it, it. It feels like the end of a season. In all honesty, the way that it ended feels like the end of a season. So it'll be very, very interesting to see where they go from here. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, we've got eight episodes left. Um, eight. Oh yeah. Yeah, sixteen total. So okay, this was the mid. This was kind of the mid season, right? Yeah, this so, is point. so you've got uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six more, and then the two part, two episode finale hmm. on March 29th. So, I really hope some of the early up earlier episodes with all the loose ends that were kind of provided or all the open st- starts of conversations. I hope we get that wrapped up, but we might not. It'll, you know, it, there's just looking at, looking over the first half of this season, there are parts that just really confuse me. And I'm kind of holding on to hope that they will be resolved in the second half. Yeah, because, you know, the, the whole thing with the, at least it would have felt like was, you know, the whole thing since even last season has been. Will the stormtroopers? When is the stormtroopers going to replace the clone troopers? Yeah. Well, it seems like we're there now. 
right? Right. Like it has been passed. The stormtroopers are going to start replacing the clone troopers. So what possibly could the rest of the season be about? And I think it's got to be, it's got to bring Crosshair back. Has to. Yeah, has to. So it has to be something with that. Um, not, because again, because I thought, I actually had the thought that Rampart was going to be the villain throughout this whole season. Oh, really? Yeah, because, you know, based on that first episode where he's like, right. you know, I, these guys can't be alive. I, I, they, they were dead or I got to make sure they're dead. So I thought he killed that clone. He was going to you know, go after the Bad Batch, but um, well, maybe that Rampart hasn't happened. Eh, I guess it's possible. I guess it's possible. Um, if this is in any, any indication, it, it doesn't really doesn't really uh, trigger anything with me. But here are the upcoming titles. Next week's episode is called The Crossing. And then you've got Retrieval. And then Metamorphosis. The Outpost. Pabu. Tipping Point. And then the final two episodes are called The Summit and Plan 99. So hmm. I don't really get anything out of those. Nope. Um, Besides tipping point could mean something with crosshair, you know, like maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? We'll find out. We will find out. So yeah. Uh, we will be back next week to talk about the crossing. Of course, mm-hmm. episode nine of, uh, of the bad batch. So, uh, yeah, these are yeah. really good though. These are really oh, good. These are great. I actually just watched them with uh, my daughter, Sam. Um, and, you know, for she's 13. So you would think, you kind of think like something like this being a little like political and a lot of, you wouldn't think she, she was glued to it. She was like, oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> so uh, they're really good. Mm-hmm. If a 13 year old girl that doesn't know anything about politics is interested in this, then she's, it was good. All right. Thanks, Hannah, for jumping on here. I know you're on the road and uh, hope the rest of the week goes well for you. Thank you. Hope the rest of the week goes well for you. Thank you so much. And once again, I'm sorry there's a bit of a lag. So we keep on talking over each other. <laughs> That's all right. That's, everybody can hear us. Um, Yes, uh, travel safe. We'll see you back here next week. Mm-hmm. As always, thanks, everybody. Uh, actually, real quick comment uh, from Thrawn Addict on our last episode. Okay. Uh, great review, guys. I'm excited to see your website and the merch you have. Might have to get a mug. Smiley face. Yes. Um, managed to get Star Wars Celebration tickets for me and my son. He's getting old enough to appreciate Star Wars and loves the toys. So excited to take him so we can see everything and buy as much as we can. Tribe episode of Bad Batch was a lot better than previous episodes of the season, including episode three, ex- excluding episode three. Mm-hmm. Uh, great to see Gunji again and always great to see more of Kashyyyk. It was good. They pointed out about certain areas being taken over by the Empire because we do know most of the plant planet gets taken into slavery during empire reign uh lastly always a bonus to see a trandoshan get their ass kicked take care and may the force be with you <laughs> yes have fun at celebration have fun at celebration absolutely uh that is fantastic yeah uh hope your son has fun as well uh say hi to everybody for us <laughs> Because we're not going to be there. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right. So, again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, make sure you uh, comment or uh, send us your thoughts on any platform, and we'll read them up here if we can. Um, and, again, InsideTheForce.com, all new website if you want to check us out there. Again, it's just kind of more information-based things, but all the links are there if you need to find some other links, get to other 
sources of the podcast feed, whatnot. Click on the shop button. I've actually got some some other designs I'm actually going to put put up there here soon. So good stuff. Hannah, take care. Thank you. Take care and thank you as well, Dave. See you, everybody, next week. Have a great weekend. See you then. May the force be with you.